Most of this stuff is down 80%. And we'll see the economy start going down the toilet. Welcome to Dream Richer. Where do you think our future is currently headed? This question is very broad and could mean a lot of different things. But as Mr. Raoul argues, we should be fearful but excited at the same time. We are about to go through an economic crash. However, at the same time, we have just entered the fourth phase of the Great Reset, which will unlock many new possibilities. The, the World Economics Forum recently took on the initiative of the Great Reset. According to Klaus Schwab, the chief executive of World Economic Forum, there are three core components of the Great Reset. The first involves creating conditions for a stakeholder economy. The second component includes building in a more resilient, equitable, and sustainable way of living. This means pushing environmental, social, and governance metrics to incorporate more green public infrastructure projects. And finally, the third component is to harness the innovations of the fourth industrial revolution for public good. By the end of this video, Mr. Raoul unravels our economic future. If you find the video helpful, then don't forget to subscribe. Let's get right into it. Companies are going to be rebuilding factories in the United States or in Europe and not in China. So that's going to add some stimulus. Yes, the jobs are not there. It's robots in the factories, but it's still stimulus for the economy. The government will do some stimulus, as we've talked about. Interest rates will remain relatively low. Inflation will remain controllable, but a little bit higher than it has been. And what that sets off is a period of stability and boom because there's so much technology, you know, there's a lot of big things happening in the world that could be. So that would be my rosy outcome would be that. And I think that is still my highest probability that we kind of muddle through this in a way that we don't expect because it feels like the end of the world. Imagine what it must have felt like in 1948. All you can see is the end of the world. And then you get this massive inflation. You just think the, this is the worst thing that could possibly happen. What actually came out of it was something very different. It was the rise of technology. It was the rise of you know, the US as a big superpower. It was a rise of the rebuilding of Europe, the, the rise of Japan. You know, it was an incredible period. Most of this stuff is down 80%. I mean, hell yes. This is what we're looking for. If you want to generate wealth, this, this is, is the time. time to step up. And you might have the ability to own both commodity stocks because the supply issues are still around for a while. Supply issue, um, commodity stocks, and technology at the same time, which a lot of people think is weird. It's like you need to be one or the other and they have this warfare over it. I think both will work quite well as a barbell strategy. Despite the new changes coming to our life due to the so-called Great Reset, many still believe that it is not made entirely out of good wishes. Simply put, some argue that the Great Reset is the global elite's plan to instate a communist world order by abolishing private property while using pandemic to solve overpopulation and enslaving what remains of humanity with jabs. What was first a marginal conspiracy theory confined to the fringes of the web has since November 2020 become a community of large individuals, with influencers such as Tucker Carlson and Ben Shapiro supporting the cause. Some believe that the World Economic Forum is controlled by Jews in general who are using the Great Reset to set up a one-world government. Balance sheet disguises all bad things. Because what it does is when they print money, it lowers the purchasing power of the dollar. And most of the central banks at the same time do it. And people always think it's going to be inflation is what it leads to. It leads to something much more pernicious and evil, which is the debasement of currency. And what that does, how it manifests itself, is all of these scarce assets, equities, real estate, gold, crypto, go up a lot. But all they're doing is reflecting the devaluation of the fiat currency itself. So that optically can change everything because suddenly all of these things go up, everybody feels okay, and it changes the outcome. People are still worse off, generally, but it's a trick. And so I think that trick gets played again pretty soon. Um, this time, I think the trick gets played in a different way, which was the other genie that came out of the bottle in 2020, which the Europeans are doing now, some states in the US are doing, Japan is doing, and a few other countries, which is uh, India is doing, which is direct transfer payments to individuals. You raise the cost of goods on people and didn't raise their salaries enough. People couldn't get the goods that they wanted exactly like now and everything collapsed. 
So we went back into recession and then eventually some better times. And I'll come back into the 1940s and 50s because I think it's a really important parallel that most people misunderstand. The next time we saw anything remotely like this was 1974. A lot of people tell you it's the 70s again, inflation, inflation. Well, the inflation episode we had in the late 70s was driven by demographics. That was the baby boomers entering the workforce all at the same time. It was the largest demand shock the world had ever seen. And we had a supply shock of these oil crises of the Arab oil embargo. That's not repeating now. What is actually more similar is 1974. 1974 was the Arab oil embargo. The price of oil tripled and interest rates went up. Inflation shot up and the immediate effect was the economy went down the toilet. It's going to happen at a shocking speed. So 1974, we went from everything looks OK to the worst recession since World War II in four months. Yeah. I'm thinking it's going to look similar because of the speed of the monetary tightening, the speed of the rise of prices. So I think we are going to have a very ugly few months, um, both economically and for markets. The question is, is what comes next? And that's the key point. If my base case comes into play, which is the Fed pivot, they stop raising rates. J they already started suggesting maybe we'll pause in September. My guess is June will be the last hike. And after that, they will say, well, we're just going to see and we'll see the economy start going down the toilet. And they will start thinking, well, we're not going to do QT now either. So they're not going to start shrinking the Fed balance sheet. And before you know it, we're going to be talking about rate cuts, but we don't have many rates to cut, you know, <laughs> rates are nowhere. So the only outcome is they're going to have to print money. It's clear from Raul Powell's explanation that crypto and the larger economy in general is about to see a major breakthrough. In the short term, we could see crypto stocks and bonds crash because of an economic recession. However, with the rise of artificial intelligence, metaverse, and cashless society as part of the Great Reset, we could see something life-changing come into play. For example, robots and artificial intelligence are expected to permeate our daily lives by 2025. This could have huge implications on several business sectors, most notably healthcare, customer service, and logistics. Already, artificial intelligence is responsible for medical research breakthroughs and climate research, not to mention self-driving cars. Do you agree with Roll Pal on the future of our economy? Let us know in comments below. To learn more about the latest crypto news, watch these videos here.